In this topic, we're going to discuss structure and function of xylem. So we'll look at what are the functions of xylem and what are the different types of xylem. So looking at tracheids, xylem vessels, fibers, and xylem parenchyma. Then I'm going to mention protoxylem and metaxylem and the different forms of lignification. And then finally, how is xylem structure related to its function? Just to recap, xylem and phloem form the vascular bundle in a plant. In a dicotyledonous plant, the vascular bundles are located towards the edge of the stem, as you can see in this diagram. Notice that the xylem is located toward the inside of the stem, and between the xylem and phloem is the cambium. The functions of the xylem are the movement of water and support. Now think about how the structure of xylem helps with these functions as we go along. So the different types of xylem tissues are the tracheids, xylem vessels, sclerenchyma fibers, and xylem parenchyma. As I mentioned, xylem forms the functions of both transporting water and mineral salts, as well as support of the plant. Parenchyma and sclerenchyma fibers contribute to the support of the plant, while tracheids and xylem vessels help with support and transport. Let's discuss tracheids first. Here you can see a tracheid and xylem vessel, so the tracheids on the left there. They've got similar structures to each other. Tracheids are longer and thinner than the vessels. They've got tapered end walls. They are thickened with lignin and therefore die when they're mature. So they are hollow when they're mature. The ends break down and their sides have got pits that allow for the lateral movement of water between the adjacent cells. The pits are areas where there's no lignin, but there's still a cellulose cell wall. Tracheids are found in all plants and are the only form of xylem in non-flowering plants. Looking at xylem vessels, xylem vessels vary in structure depending on the type and amount of thickening in their walls, but they are hollow and elongated. As they mature, their walls become thickened with lignin, which causes them to die. The end walls break down to form a perforation plate, which allows the cells to be joined end to end. This forms a continuous tube so that there's less resistance. Now the word element is sometimes used rather than cell because a cell is a living structure, whereas mature xylem vessels are dead. They have an empty lumen, which provides less resistance. They also have pits, which allow for the lateral movement of water. And these pits are formed where the plasmodesmata were. Just briefly looking at lignin, lignin is a hard and rigid substance. It can be deposited in different ways, therefore giving rise to annular, spiral, reticulate and pitted xylem vessels. Reticulate and pitted lignification is found in mature xylem. Now xylem vessels have cellular cell walls first. These then become lignified. Lignin is impermeable, so will not allow substances in or out, and the cell contents will die. At first, the lignin is only laid down in rings or spirals, so the cell can elongate. <coughs> Sorry, elongate. In mature xylem, the walls have lots of lignin, making them scleriform or pitted. So young xylem is called protoxylem, and it has annular or spiral thickening, as you can see on the left there. 
Mature xylem is called metaxylem, and it's much bigger and thicker, and it's got reticulate or pitted thickening. So let's have a look at a few images. This is xylem in cross-section under a high-power microscope. Remember that the cellular cell wall has had lignin deposit in it, and lignin stains red in most slides. The cell contents have died, leaving a hollow lumen, and this reduces the resistance to flow. This longitudinal stem section clearly shows protozylum with simple thickening. This is a transverse section. Note the protozylum at the ends of the arms. It's much smaller than the metazylum in the middle. Right, let's have a look at sclerenchyma fibers. Here you can see two images with the sclerenchyma fibers. Notice how they are located next to the xylem vessels. They help to support the plant. These are elongated sclerenchyma cells with walls that are thickened with lignin. They are shorter and thicken oh sorry, <laughs> they're shorter and thicker than tracheids and they have thick lignin walls. They have no living content and they function as support only. And finally, xylem parenchyma. These are living cells. They have a thin cellular cell wall and they function as packing tissue. So here you can see a transverse section. Notice the protoxylum at the ends of the arms. It's much smaller than the metaxylum in the middle. So when you draw xylem under high power, you use a double line to show the wall is thickened. So don't color and use a double line. Note the parenchyma packing cells between the xylem vessels. Okay, let's have a look at how xylem structures related to its function. Can you think of some structures that relate it to its function? Well, the cells are long and arranged end to end to form a continuous column. The cell contents die when mature, which means that there's no cytoplasm or nucleus to prevent water flow. The end walls can break down, so there's no barrier to water flow between the adjacent cells. The cell walls are thickened with lignin, which makes them more rigid and therefore less likely to collapse under the tension created by the transpiration pull. This also increases the adhesion of water molecules, allowing for them to rise by capillarity. Annular, reticulate and spiral thickening allow elongation during growth. This allows for the branches to be flexible and to be able to bend in the wind. There are pits throughout the cells to allow lateral movement of water. And they have a large lumen which allows a large volume of water to be transported. Right in summary, we looked at the functions of xylem, so it's transport of water and support, and then the different types of xylem tissue, tracheids, xylem vessels, fibers, and xylem parenchyma. 
I also mentioned protoxylum and metaxylum and the different forms of lignification. And then finally, can you think of how xylem structure is related to its function? And that concludes our lesson. The end.